we would like to now invite our first student speaker, um, Vlad Jordake from the German high school Hermann Oper, and his speech is titled uh, History of Simplicity. Second, at each of these two paintings. Which one is simple? Which one is complex? Is yours complex just because of its detailed lines? Is marked simple only because of its use of common geometrical shapes and its lack of detail? What is simplicity for us? How has our understanding of it changed throughout time? How has technology affected our relationship with it? Is the modern man truly complex or is he in fact simple? Hello, my name is Vladio Dagi Krikoyan, and I believe that in order to answer all of these questions, and perhaps more, we first have to take a step back and a look at what simplicity and complexity have been throughout history, and how our understanding of them have changed throughout time. For as Carl Sagan once famously said, you have to know the past to understand the present. We need to look at our evolution first to understand our modern, world and its complexity and its detail. Um, so I now invite you to join me in a journey through time. Where do I? Okay. Let us start with the man of the prehistoric. He was quite simple, wasn't he? Running around with sticks and stones, hunting and gathering, spending all of his time in search for food so as to survive. We would consider his life a plain and simple one. But was he in fact as simple as we think? Wasn't he able to develop ways of interacting with his peers? Wasn't he able to perform a wide variety of tasks? And then we have a general understanding of knowledge? As some recent studies have shown, they even understood the dangers of inbreeding. I wonder, how were they able to figure such a thing out? And tens of thousands of years later, most European nobles were not. The question can be thus raised. Is it right for us to consider the prehistoric man simple? I believe he was much smarter than we credit him, and not at all that different compared to us and how we are today. Um, next slide. Moving now 2,000 years into the future, let us think of Socrates, who led quite a simple life. He was poor and thus looked down on by the beach. He spent his life in search for knowledge, not wealth. But uh, was Socrates truly simple? Isn't his simplicity actually a sign of complexity? He, through his student, is the father of Western philosophy. His thoughts are at the basis of our understanding of the world today. 2,500 years later, the Socratic method, his method of deductive reasoning, is still one of the ideas worth spreading. He has shaped the way we think about the world. I wonder who would look down on someone for searching simplicity and for not enjoying a lavish lifestyle and for trying to question the status quo. The problems that confronted their world are still present today. For the same types of people that can be observed in Plato's Socratic dialogues can be observed in our societies. The same people that tried and managed to commit Convict Socrates. Moving now, another 2,000 years into the future, let us think of the man of Renaissance, who was supposed to possess all knowledge, to excel in all subjects. He deserved what we today would call a complex life. Let us think of Leonardo da Vinci, who is the perfect example of this version of man. He was a mathematician, he was a painter, he was a physicist. But in his search for complexity, he had a simultaneous one for simplicity. For he once famously said that simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. I believe he, in his saying, was quite right. Returning now our thoughts to Socrates, we can see how his... Um, his... His... 
departure into the metaphysical world of the mind into a more sophisticated realm wasn't a sign of simplicity. This renunciation of the material world was actually a sign of complexity and of how he managed to find a balance between these two ideas. Uh, returning now to Da Vinci's say, his saying is right, and I also believe the opposite of it is true. For complexity is the ultimate simplification. Um, next slide, and also next one and next one after that. Um, next. Okay. Uh, jumping now, another 500 years into the future, let us consider our modern world. It is quite complex. It had, our world has never been more so. We have got all of this complicated science and technology. We are surrounded by a lot of information and we have accomplished so much throughout the ages. But is the modern man truly complex? Isn't he in fact much more simple than that of Renaissance or than the all-knowing Greek scholar? Hasn't our age of advancement stripped us of most complexity? For one cannot succeed today by knowing a little bit about everything, but by knowing a lot about a single subject. We have been simplified and have become specialized, single-purpose elements of a giant complex mechanism. Take a careful look at the image in my background. Through technological advancement, we have managed to light up the world, to travel to space. But now, the same being that managed all of this that managed to develop heart surgery, to conquer the globe and to travel to the moon, is on the brink of losing it all. As a result of our greedy quest for more, for faster and for better, we have created technology that can and will replace us. For isn't artificial intelligence just another result of our search for a more simple life? Haven't we created uh, some of the most complex computers to ease our daily lives. The modern man is on the brink of, brink of becoming much simpler than we would think. We will soon become only beings that live their lives to get to see the next day without a true purpose. Uh, next slide. Follow now alongside me the following train of thought. How would we feel placed in the prehistoric world? How would a prehistoric man feel if placed in our modern society? I think he would be astonished by the complexity of our world, but also by the fact we only have to perform a small number of tasks and not, as he did, all of the tasks known to man in order to survive. We would probably be faced with the opposite situation. We would be faced with a world we consider simple, but in which we do not know how to survive because the small set of tasks that are needed for our modern world, for our complex world, are utterly useless in the prehistoric one. Thus, my conclusion follows. There will always be a balance present between simplicity and complexity that will rule all aspects of our world and determine the shape of it. I have tried to show how this throughout history has been true as regards the relationship between individual and world and society and how as the world around us has grown more and more complex we have become simple beings and have adjusted so as to maintain this balance. Um, next one. Looking now once again at the two images I started with, we can see how art is the prime example of this balance and how these both masterpieces prove it. In the case of Durer's artwork, its shapes are complex, but its meaning is simple and easily comprehensible. Whilst in the case of Marx's work, its shapes are simple and common, but its meaning is elusive, and thus it is complex. Art alongside history serves as a chronicle of human development and showcases us how our, our understanding of complexity and simplicity has shifted throughout time and how we have evolved. Uh, While writing the many iterations of my speech, I have asked myself over and over what a TED Talk should be. And I have come to the following conclusion. It should be a complex subject 
narrow down to its most simple core and presented in a easily understandable and somewhat relatable fashion. Doesn't this time neatly with today's series of speeches and with my point? It is another perfect example of how we as humans will always search for simplicity and complexity at the same time, finding one through the other. Such is the nature of our world, determined by this ever-present equilibrium between simplicity and complexity. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication, and complexity is the ultimate simplification. Thank you for listening.